electric seal. All right, welcome back to the channel. So some big news in the world of the seal and BYD is this. So BYD Europe just announced yesterday that version 2.0 update will be rolled out as over the air starting this month here in Europe. And this is a major update. I think it's the biggest update that they have done via over the air up until now. It's even bigger than 1.4 was in terms of the new functionality and optimizations added. And of course, I'm going to do my full review of this 2.0 here on the Electric Seal channel when I get it. So if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, remember to subscribe now so that you will get the full review among the very first. But anyway, today I'm going to discuss already a little bit about this and what to expect from this 2.0 update. Especially the single biggest feature that they have ever added to the seal, which is the battery preheating functionality. <laughs> oh my God, this is nuts. That is part of the 2.0 update. Because the battery preheating is of course super interesting from a few angles. I think from technology point of view, because some of the hardware choices they have done with the seal makes this interesting and I will tell more about that in this video. The second is user experience of course, especially for drivers in colder climates. You remember my charging videos from last winter in minus 15 degrees and seeing the battery heat itself not until the charging session had started, which of course is not optimal. So there, the possible upside in user experience is really significant with this battery preheating. And then finally, third one, how effective it will be in practice? And that's a question mark. And it links to the hardware choices made with the seal. And I will discuss that in this video. So this one definitely is super interesting topic. Hopefully you will find this video interesting and useful. So let's get to it. So looking at this upcoming 2.0 update and the contents of the update, BYD Europe shared yesterday this info deck, which lists the new features and optimizations. And here in the new features, there are four things listed. And the first one is vehicle scheduling feature to smart charging. This one, of course, is something that many people, myself included, have already had with 2.4 or 2.4.1, uh, but it's depending on the system version as well. So there is always this over the air version and then there is the system version. And I think they have included this one here as a new feature because many people don't yet have this uh, in the previous versions and they are kind of, uh, if they're running older versions and moving straight to 2.0, and the latest system version, they will see this for the first time. And I suspect that's the reason why it's listed here as the new feature, even though some users already have it. But the second bullet is really the biggest one. It is the preheating functionality to the battery. At least as a title, this is the biggest. Of course, we need to see in practice how effective it will be and how useful it will be. But that one should really be the highlight of this update. Uh, then there are BYD Assistant related uh, features, there is new language support, there is new voice skills and all those kind of things. But then in the optimizations list, actually the first bullet, I think is the second most significant update of this 2.0 and that is optimizing the system UI display. I would even raise this one as a new feature because it updates the whole UI to this uh, 5.0 UI. You can see here a really sleek looking new interface. And to me, this is a kind of a not optimization. This is a new feature. This is a big kind of facelift to the UI. If you look at this front screen here, this one I assume will replace the current front screen, which of course has those three big uh, circle icons there side by side. I think, um, you know, time has come to make it more modern and do this facelift. And at least what I see here with this one screenshot, I definitely like it. It shows you already that there is a lot of customization options. And also it's visually, I think it's a big update from what the seal has uh, currently. So, so this one, uh, even though mentioned here as optimizations, I think that is the second highlight 
to, to mention about this upcoming 2.0. Then there are optimizations like driving password function, uh, map speed limit indicator display. Uh, we need to find out with the full test then what this is all about. Um, there is language translation fixes, there is optimization to the brightness adaptation of the screen for light and dark mode, and also optimizations in the dynamic balance ability of state of charge. It's a bit cryptic way to say it, I, I suppose this has to do with how the car calculates the, the state of charge in a more accurate way. We need to get back to that one when the update actually is available. And then also improved charging speed in low temperature conditions. This one I think is heavily linked to the preheating functionality of course. But I wonder is there also something else here in the way the BMS, the battery management system works in low temperature. So maybe there is actually kind of double improvement for low temperature charging. One is the preheating functionality and other is some other BMS software optimizations. I don't know, but we will test it later in cold conditions. In the winter I'm going to do that minus 15 degrees Celsius test and we are going to get all the readings with the OBD reader and take a close look at how the battery temperature actually behaves. And uh, that will then be the, uh, you know, the, the judgment day that will decide how successful these, these really are. So that's coming up, no pressure BYD. All right, but now let's discuss the big topic, the battery preheating and also the technology underneath. Um, first of all, this is uh, really great news that the support for this functionality comes as over-the-air update. I think not many electric cars have introduced battery preheating as over-the-air update after the release of the car. That list of cars is really short, and now BYD Seal will be one of those cars. I think, you know, Polestar 2 or maybe the XC40 comes to mind as cars that may have gotten the, the battery preheating via over-the-air update. And of course there are some others as well, maybe something from VW. And, and, but, but it's still kind of a very compact list of manufacturers that be, have been able to pull this off. So that's kind of um, hats off to BYD. But of course at the same time, you know, you have to be a little bit skeptical and, and you know here on the electric seal channel that I really think the seal is a great car and I've been, uh, you know, praising many things about it. But of course we need to be objective about things. I'm going to give my honest review of how good this battery preheating is in practice. And I was one of the first customers to order the seal in Europe for October 2023 and then the eventually the delivery date was um, March uh, 24. Uh, but when I ordered the seal I did some research on how the car is built and what kind of you know hardware choices they have done. And to me it was clear at that point already that there is no battery preheating. Of course what the car has is battery heating and cooling but it triggers that function only when the charging has already begun. So it doesn't have the preheating, but of course the heating and cooling functionality is there. And I also found out the way the seal's battery heating and cooling works is actually quite different to many electric cars on the market and many, many of the competitors. And the way that this um, heating and cooling system in the seal has been designed, it also makes this preheating interesting from technology point of view and what it means for the user experience. So based on my understanding, the seal uses a direct refrigerant cooling heating method. This is a direct cooling and heating using the refrigerant or coolant directly so that the refrigerant from the heat pump system is routed into cooling plates attached to the bottom of the battery. And this is uh, controlled by the heat pump which is this nine valve switching unit that enables eight different operating modes. There's the AC heating cooling, there's the battery heating cooling and their combinations. And now the key difference versus 
many of the other electric cars is that they use a water centric system where the refrigerant kind of heats the water which is the coolant through the heat exchangers and the water is then used to heat or cool the battery uh, so both cars you know the the seal and the 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 rest of the market use liquid cooling but with the other cars water is the coolant but in the seal, they have done direct refrigerant cooling method. So in many of the other cars with those systems, almost all thermal management except the cabin AC is integrated into water circuits. And in, in contrast, BYD with the seal uses water cooling only for the inverter and the electric motors. And the battery is directly refrigerant cooled. And that is a key difference. And, and this system is, of course, it is a technology innovation in a way, but we need to be direct about this. It is primarily cost-cutting measure. And, and from user experience point of view, it, it probably would be better to have water-centric system that also uses um, PTC or electric resistant heaters to warm the liquid that goes to the, the battery heating system. Many cars have this combination of um, liquid cooling and the PTC heater that is installed in the coolant circuit. And, and with those cars, when the battery heating is needed, the PTC heats the coolant and warm coolant is then circulated through the channels or plates around the battery pack. And battery warms up directly by this heated liquid. But BYD Seal, based on my understanding, uses refrigerant directly on the battery plates and it's bypassing the coolant loop. And that's why it's a completely different design. And like mentioned, user experience point of view, you know, I would prefer this water-centric system with the PTC heaters. That would be better. So what BYD has done is about cost optimization. And of course, that's also important because kind of a solutions like this, they enable the car to be really affordable, especially in some markets. Maybe not at the moment here in Finland, it's not super affordable compared to what else you can get from the market. But there are countries where the seal is like, is, is like an amazing offer. And it is like, it is solutions like this that enable BYD to sell this car at very competitive price points while maintaining the profitability. So, you know, of course, in that sense, it is consumers uh, benefit, but, um, but of course, you know, um, people are living in colder climates and given the current price points that they have in, in Europe and the current competition, maybe it's not quite optimal and people would, you know, appreciate a little bit different kind of uh, heating cooling system with this price point. But anyway, it's also tech innovation because the Blade LFP battery in the seal is able to handle higher thermal tolerance. So it handles, you know, extreme temperatures better than the traditional battery chemistries. And it also means then that more simpler heating and cooling method is sufficient for the Blade LFP battery. Previously, this type of direct refrigerant-based cooling methods, they have been introduced in much smaller cars, like really kind of A-class cars, you know, under four meters long and small battery packs. There it has worked for quite some time, but the SEAL has a pretty massive battery pack, 82 and a half kilowatt hours. It has to be a world record, the biggest battery pack in mass market electric car that uses direct refrigerant cooling method. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I'm by no means an expert in battery technology, but this is my perception of things um, and I think I'm not far off. But let me know in the comments if you have different insight into this. But this direct refrigerant-based cooling and heating, it is not without drawbacks or compromises. And the risk is uneven cooling, especially with this large battery pack. So the, the refrigerant temperature, it rises significantly as it evaporates. So the battery cooling plate may cool strongly when it comes in, but then quite weakly 
when it comes out. So the other side of the battery, the battery cells on the other side may cool or heat much more effectively than the cells on the opposite side of the battery. And this is exactly the, the reason that, co that causes some of the challenges with uh, DC charging both in winter and then in very warm conditions like 35 degrees. And if you do multiple DC in a row, you will end up with a lower charging power because the temperature difference between the cells, it's too big. And that is because of this cooling and heating method, this direct cooling and heating method using the refrigerant as the direct coolant for the battery. Um, it's less of an issue with very small and compact battery packs. Then the, the temperature difference of the refrigerant when it goes through the, the plates in the, the battery is smaller. But now with this massive 82 and a half kilowatt hour LFP battery, the temperature difference between the cells is, is higher. And that is the compromise with this cost optimization with the seal. And, and of course, the interesting question now when they will introduce the battery preheating is that um, when you have these, let's say, limitations in the hardware, that may actually be the reason why the preheating has been excluded in the first place. You know, so if I'm driving in, you know, minus 20 degrees, I will go to the Lapland and it's minus 20. And I'm getting closer to my, uh, my, my charging stop. Let's say I'm, I'm, you know, 80 kilometers away from my charging stop and I start the battery preheating. And now the, the heat pump, the nine valve heat pump in the seal must handle this combination of uh, warming the cabin and warming the battery at the same time. So in minus 20 degrees, then what happens to the cabin temperature? Is the hardware enough to really effectively keep the cabin warm and then, and then heat the battery also effectively enough to heat the battery? That is the big question. Because uh, also the seal manual states that um, uh, when, when uh, charging the car, the effectiveness of the AC might be more limited. And now you understand why they say that in the manual. Because of the, the coolant and heating method is the direct refrigerant based system. So, so this, is, this is my biggest question uh, now that when they introduce the preheating that it's great to have that in the software side, but can the hardware keep up? That we will find this coming winter uh, when the temperature will be there, there in the minus 15 or, or even colder. Um, so that's going to be the stress test for this system. We are going to find out. But um, yeah, just uh, keep in mind if you are in colder climates, you know, uh, even though it's great that 2.0 has battery preheating, that is a big promise at this point, but we need to see how that delivers. Hopefully my skepticism is um, kind of uh, unnecessary here, and we will see great performance uh, by the car in also extreme conditions. But that will be seen. But anyway, this was a bit of um, introduction to what to expect from this upcoming 2.0 version update as mentioned stay tuned to the channel subscribe to the channel you will get the notification when i have the full review of this update available and then we'll dive into into the details of the 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 new features and improvements but let me know in the comments if you found this useful or if you maybe have some more insight on the technology underneath uh, the battery heating and cooling. That will be useful for everyone to read also in the comments section. So thanks for watching and until next time.